Hey guys, this is Game of Cow playing Super Mario Star Road. Two things to really say. One, Yoshi does not appear here when you press start again. Apparently he's only here at the very beginning. No, that, that's not what I was going to say at all. What I was going to say is this is actually unfortunately take two. Because, well, I was trying extra like video setting stuffs in uh, the emulator to fix like the interlacing and stuff. And... Apparently that did not... Hey, birds out of that tree as well, that's kind of weird. No, apparently that didn't actually work with the, uh, you know, recording setting stuff, and it kind of had a black screen through the entire recording, which is not exactly good when you are going through here. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, because I'd actually done, like half of this and how one of these is unfortunately the red coin one so I spent about 15 minutes on that and you know never mind stuff happens. Now some of you probably already groaned that Gino's Woods is playing here but to be honest I like it. I mean it's okay it's a very commonly used thing in ROM hacks you know, of the Super Mario world kind but with this being an N64 game, the music level is completely different, and I actually think this is a much better rendition than any of the any of the um, potential Mario World ones. So you know, it's it's there. Also, the trees in this place look kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie. You know, red coins just look like red coins. That's pretty much it. We've seen the shy guys are basically just Goombas, which are reskinned. I think that's kind of cool, actually. In a way, you know, it's like, yeah, we're gonna just use the basic enemy, but we're gonna make it look different. I suppose it's not really that big of a deal in the end, but uh, it's there anyway. And you, again, why is there so many fly guys in this early game? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but fly guy, as far as I remember, only came in at, well, uh, course 8 to start with. Yet, here we are, we've seen him in all of the first three courses. It's kind of weird, really. At least I think we saw him in the first one? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, a quick, like, sort of comparison thing. The first two courses are very similar to the original game, whereas this one is completely different, because Course 3 being Jolly Roger Bay, yeah, this is as good as you get for that. I mean, there is water, so they're still swimming, but there's been swimming in all three levels. So, you know, it's... It's, yeah, not exactly the same sort of deal. Also, getting up there is more annoying than it deserves to be. It's... I don't know, there's just something about it which is annoying. Like, I... I don't know, it's, there's a hill pretty much here, which is, um, which kept stopping me from getting up properly when I was there before. And... I don't know, it's... it's just... you've either got to get the triple jump momentum as I did, or you're going to be running, diving, everything. So yeah. Through this pipe is... I think the pipes basically are just going to be shortcut based stuff to other areas in this. Because, I mean, you could easily make it over here without the pipe, but it's still kind of convenient, I suppose. I don't know. Piranha plant? Well, it is their pond, so they're supposed to be here. Who knows? Uh, the piranha plants in this game are kind of weird as well. When you compare them, or when you even think about what they are normally like, every other game they've kind of been these impossible to kill enemies that just come out of pipes unless you've got like fire. Of course there's no fire in this game, but Mario just wrecks the crap out of everything with his um, fists, so you know, it's, it's compensated for I suppose. But yeah, there's there's not a whole lot you can really say about the Piranha Plants in this game. They're vicious if you don't sneak up on them or attack them from the distance. But really, the only way that a Piranha Plant can be truly threatening in this game is if there was no way to actually come at it from here. You know, without waking it up. Which would be to put it on top of a jump or something. I don't know. Also, in case you didn't actually realize by now, because I don't think I said that specifically. I do have my um, pad, my proper game pads for this now, so I do have analog control. See, even that, I didn't sneak up on him at all, and I still killed it without actually taking anything. That's, yeah, kind of ridiculous in the end, but oh well. 
What's in this box? Uh, ten coins. Right, okay. I'm fairly sure this is not the hardest of ones to get a hundred coins on either. That's one thing I have noticed so far as well, is that there are a lot of coins in these places, and most of them are quite straightforward to get hold of. When I was looking at the original, I was thinking the original is very difficult to get a hundred coins on the first couple of courses. And there isn't even that many in the third one, so it's... Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of interesting to see that it's a lot easier to get coins here. I, d I don't know, It's maybe it's just me that thinks that, but um, yeah, over here I'm trying to find a sign, I could have sworn I saw a sign down here, but um, doesn't look to be the case, so we'll just keep on going. This is the ruins which the star said to go and climb, so basically this is what we've got to get up. It's a little bit more annoying than it should be, probably just because of camera issues, but it's not the end of the world. You can uh, you can do that if you want, but that's not going to really get you anywhere, so just best not to bother with that. Um, it is all about getting your positioning right. Now half the battle here seems to be the camera as opposed to anything else. It's kind of a lame thing to be fighting here, but it seems to be the case. One thing about the 3D control setup compared to full-on just basic 2D is that it's very, very much more difficult to change your direction instantly. I found that in um, Galaxy, Galaxy 2 probably more, but then Galaxy 2, that is, it's kind of weird to control that anyway. Just because of the nature of it, it's like you're going around planets, and that that's surprisingly hard sometimes to get the 3D controller to actually do what you want. It's not a controller, it's a controller, but uh, whatever. It wasn't that hard to get up in the end anyway, so that's fine. The beauty of these levels though, and I think this is probably more than the original so far, is that they're very short and it's very easy to get to where you want to go. So it's like, even if you mess it up you and, you know, have to restart the level, right now you don't tend to have to take more than a minute to get back to where you were. So it's pretty good. Anyway, the flooded cave is quite clearly going to be here. There's no other cave-like structure in this entire place. I mean, I guess you could maybe try and find it down the bottom of here, but if you've explored a little bit of the level in the first place, you'll know there's no entrance to anything down there. So it's kind of obvious that that is not, in fact, where you are supposed to go. So basically, that this is the only real direction that we can go in, and yeah, it's just telling you to let, you know, like to get in by doing that. You don't really need to if you um if you just you know come in as normal and then press R when you actually get inside that tends to do better. Also, coin down there. Pay attention to that, I guess, because we're going to be getting those next stars. So yeah, that's about the only time that a piranha plant could ever be threatening. Also, these guys. When did these first appear? I'm pretty sure it wasn't until like stage five or something at the very least. Also, camera. Come on. But the star we are after is in that box over there. Now unfortunately, when I was trying to get this before, I sort of noticed that you can't just straight jump out of the water to it. Even though you could reach that high, for some reason the platform around that bit is glitched in a way. I don't think it's glitched, this is probably intentional. Get the... Jesus Christ, Camo, why? But uh, yeah, pretty sure it's an intentional thing to make sure that you have to do it this way. But when you try and jump up from the bottom there, it uh, whoa, Jesus how it um, just doesn't work. It sends you all the way down to the bottom of the bottom of the uh, the, the, the the bed on the water. Like after, it's better just to show it. If you try and um, if you try and jump up, it just sends you straight down here. So, you can't actually do that. You could maybe jump at it from a distance, but then it's difficult to get forward momentum on it. So, yeah, it's 
it's designed so that you're not able to do it that way. So what you've got to do instead is you've got to push the block across. I mean, it's it's fairly obvious because that's like half the point. You know, that's the only real reason you would have the block there, and it gives you an extra challenge in the sense that you've got to get it past those guys, which I cannot remember the first time they were seen, but I know it was quite late into the game, maybe stage seven or so, six or seven, somewhere around there. But uh, yeah, that completely contradicts what I said before. But then again, stage five was Boo Town, so it, they probably. Maybe would have been in there? Oh, I don't even know. The, I, it's been forever since I played the original game, so I'm not going to be that great on specifics of saying, huh, this enemy appeared first at this stage, etc. I know what the stages are, but it's just... nah. Anywho, we do have 8 stars, so we can break the first two doors. That's not what we're going to be doing just now, however. That's what we're going to be doing in a bit, because I want to get 3 stars out of this place. That's just how it's going to go, pretty much. And, unfortunately, the star is the red coin one, but, you know, red coins are not necessarily that bad. Don't don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against them, it's just they're not very great for an LP-based format. Because, you know, you want... To, can I just get up here? Like, seriously? <laughs> I think I see what's going on. What's going on is it's, um, yeah, it's just messing me up a little bit because it's, you could technically walk on that, but it's, it's such a big hill that walking on it doesn't really work. But, yeah, the I the idea of this place, uh, the red coins, really, it's, it's nice because it gets you to explore the level, but at the same time, it's not LP friendly because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't exactly fit very well because you end up having to take ages to explore the levels and I'm pretty sure later on in this when the game starts getting actually hard the red coins are going to be a huge pain in the ass for you know any of the stars and I cannot get up these things to save my life this is kind of really annoying actually um like seriously the it's just because of the little hill bit at the front of it you've got to yeah do really weird stuff with it well, you know, that that is something that you would have to pay attention to if you were actually playing, but you are not, so you just have to watch me fail at it instead. That's something. Not exactly something you would want to watch either, so, you know, it would be nice if I didn't do that. Fly guy, come on, let me get up here. Ah, still missed it anyway, but that's fine, because we'll just kick. Kick to get it, I guess. That's, that's another thing in its own right. As I've kind of said, I've not played the original game of this in a long time. The The last 3D one I played was Mario Galaxy, specifically Galaxy 2. And you know, nowadays, the control over everything... By the way, it's an invisible wall over here. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the control of everything nowadays is much, much more fluid. This game still has fantastic controls, don't get me wrong, but it's nowhere near as refined as the modern iterations. As you would expect, this was the very first 3D game, so, you know, it is sort of the prototype to all of this. Also, you know, he will open up the cannon, which is what we'll need later. Might as well open it up just now, because it's there. But yeah, the, the controls are not quite as specific in this, you know, it, it's simple stuff, like the wall kicking is not quite there. The, um... The jumping, you, you've seen me slip off of platforms quite a lot before, and that's, that's a lot more prevalent in this game. In the more recent ones, they've tended to have a sort of snap grab, especially Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 had a, um, a fantastic little feature that way, which kind of annoyed me sometimes as well, but it basically lets you snap grab back onto a platform. If you were to slip off it, the first thing it would do is grab on to the platform again, just to say, oh hey, by the way, you might not be f deliberately falling off here, so we're going to give you a chance to not fall off here. Which is something I was at odds with for a while, but it was a good, good, implement a good implemented feature in the end. Yes. That's exactly what I wanted to try and get out. It was just kind of hard. Okay, right, so the last coins, we know there's one in that tree because we just seen that earlier. You can see there's one over there and there's one down there. So let's just try and use the music block 
and it's not going to matter at all. That's another cool thing, I think, is um, the block there. I'm pretty sure that first came in in stage 5, but it's a it's a cool little thing, and it's one of those that uh, Nintendo didn't use that much. I mean, they, they used it a bit, but... You know, it's kind of like Mario World that way. There's a lot of stuff in this game which didn't get used that much. And it's going to be interesting to see how much of that gets used a lot more in this game. Also, apparently I can't count because that was only red coin number 6, so I still got to find one. Um, yeah, about that. It's just down here. Again, we sort of knew that because I've been around this bit anyhow. Uh, this switch down here, you'll need to have the metal cap for that, which is again something we've not got yet, so... You can see the block is right there, it's very straightforward, so, you know... No need to really harp on about that, we'll, we'll be getting that later. And, well, actually, we'll probably be getting that next part, because I am doing these courses in order, and, spoilers, the metal cap is in stage 4. It's actually really hard to find, and the game tells you it's in stage 4, so it's not much of a spoiler, to be honest, but, um, yeah. wonder what's in that block. I'm pretty sure that block has a star. I've not really explored that, but I'm pretty sure it does. And you can see there are two power stars over there, which is quite weird. And, well, I reckon the whole point of the cannon is to get those two, or at least one of them. Don't know how you would get the second one. Maybe it's a star specific thing you know how that that's that's another cool thing about 64 i guess compared to you know its previous 2d iterations is that although you're doing the same stage like six times technically seven if you're not getting 100 coins within one of them but uh you're doing the same stage six times to get the stars but the stars itself make the stage very slightly different every time like when you play the first world and, you know, the first star in bob Battlefield and you beat the King bob etc., it's all great. Second time round, it's not quite the same because King bob is gone and there's other stuff happen. Quite often, I've seen even in this hack as well, there are extra things which appear or disappear depending on the star that you get so that it guides you towards the star that it wants, you know, wants you to shoot for. Which is good definitely something which is worth doing and you know it, it it just makes the level that little bit different each time and that just makes it yeah fun to go back to basically but now we have broken the seal on the door which is fine there is this level over here which has the chucky so of course that is chucky harbor which is where we're going to go next time yeah I, it's it's one of those things the, the way i say stuff is just going to sound kind of weird with that. I should probably slow down for it, I don't know. But yeah, this door you don't even have to open, so long as you open one of the eight stars, you get the second one as well. And the Vanish Cap is here. Well, the switch does a block for the Vanish Cap. That is what you need to get to the bunny, which I don't know if I showed before. I'm pretty sure I did. There's a cage outside which you need to get. It's a little bit tricky, but not that hard. In the end, I don't think. Like, it doesn't look that hard to get it. Because although it's it's a reasonable distance away, the bunny is up the hill here. So, yeah, you need to get the Vanish Cap to get to here. Because, obviously, you can't get inside this otherwise. And he... Well, bunnies in the original game gave you a star when you caught them. So, I'm pretty sure he'll give you a star as well. Anyway, that is three stars for this video, so this is basically going to be it. So, this has been GamerCow playing Super Mario Star World, and we're going to mess around for a little bit here. And yeah, join us next time when we go into this level. Wait, 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 wait. There's a thing up here. I didn't actually know about that. Huh, guess we're going to be exploring that next time as well. So yeah, see you guys for that then.